Hello, this is Dr. Andrea Maxim, naturopathic doctor, the author of Maximized Health, the new intelligence system for optimal digestion and hormones, and the creator of the Maxim movement, where it's our goal to have you regain control over your health once and for all, and set the example for those in your family and in your community as to what health can look like. Now normally I do presentations where you can actually see me but today I wanted to share with you a presentation that I created based on the book Why Do I Still Have Thyroid Symptoms When My Lab Tests Are Normal? And so the rest of the presentation is simply just taking some of the things that I thought was very interesting with regards to autoimmune thyroid health in particular. And I don't know about you, but I've been speaking to a lot of patients and seeing a lot more information about people that are suffering from low mood, weight gain, hair loss, foggy thinking, their skin is changing, their nails are becoming brittle, and yet the lab work keeps coming back that everything is fine. And for the most part, it is not fine for them. So we need to make sure that we are looking at everything we need to do to see if our thyroid is functioning. And more often than not, these patients will have an underdiagnosed or an undiagnosed, I should say, thyroid condition. I'm not going to go into the details of how the thyroid functions. But I simply wanted to discuss the functional ranges of the main markers we're testing. So, TSH, or thyroid stimulating hormone, should be within 1.5 to 2.5 um, on your lab work. If you find it greater than 2.5, you may be sliding into hypothyroidism, hypo like a hippo, where it becomes very big. Um, the skin is very dry, the energy levels are very low. Um, I always try to picture like a hippo or an elephant for hypothyroid. Or if it's lower than 1.5, you could be heading into hyperthyroidism, which is the complete opposite. And if you want to think of another animal, think of like a cheetah. Go, 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 can't relax. Um, and not that this would be a cheetah, but you're not sleeping well, um, your heart is racing, you're sweating, all those signs are hyperthyroid. But the other ones we want to measure is how the thyroid hormone is converting and how it is actually functioning in the body. So this is where T3 and T4 come in. Again, the functional range for free T4, 12 to 20, and the functional range for T3, 40 or excuse me 4.0 to 5.5 now there's another marker here called reverse t3 this isn't something that commonly gets tested um, with your medical doctor usually you have to use some outside labs like Genova diagnostics or something like that and reverse t3 is where the body is able to convert to, um, the thyroid from T4 to T3, but then it converts it right back or it makes it into a molecule that isn't being recognized or used by the body, and we call that reverse T3. This can happen with high stress, with any traumas or severe chronic illnesses. And again, the functional range we'd like to see is 16 to 24. So the main point I want you to think about here is I want you to go grab your latest blood work. Number one, see if they measured TSH, T3, T4, and see where your levels measure up with regards to the lab work and see if that might have anything to do with the hormone symptoms that you're having. But the big one we see more often than not is hypothyroid, and when it comes to the autoimmune component, it's Hashimoto's. So what was very interesting in this book, Why Do I Still Have Thyroid Symptoms When My Lab Tests Are Normal, is that he brought up a very interesting point. He said, when we see autoimmune conditions, we need to make sure that we are treating 
the immune system, not just the thyroid, and that people generally have either a Th1 dominant side or a Th2 dominant side. We're going to go into what those mean in a second. He also mentioned that most people, at least 90% of people with an autoimmune condition of the thyroid, generally cannot process vitamin D. So to that lab work that you're getting done, I encourage you to get your vitamin D levels done. And we also need to make sure that all these patients are being given high dose EPA which and DHA, which comes from fish oil. These are both highly anti-inflammatory, very important for cellular function, very important for brain function. So definitely get on a high dose of fish oil. And what I usually recommend is about 1,500 milligrams of EPA just in the initial part of treatment and then going down to a maintenance dosage of 850 milligrams of EPA. So with Th1 dominant, what we're looking at here is people that are a little bit more on the undersensitive side. So these people will actually respond very well to caffeine, to green tea, um, to uh, white willow bark, resveratrol, pycnogenol. But it's the big one that I want you to think about is caffeine. How do you respond when you have coffee or tea that's high in caffeine? Do you find that you get worse, meaning you get more agitated, your mood changes, you just can't really metabolize it that well, or do you find that it actually calms you down and makes you feel better? So these are some of the ways you can identify if you're Th1 or Th2 dominant. The thing about this is though is that if you are Th1 dominant and we want to decrease or support that side, it'll actually um, worsen Th2 people if you are very sensitive to caffeine or green tea extract or grapeseed extract or what have you. So this is why with Th2 we find these people are a little oversensitive and we want to use more nourishing things like astragalus, echinacea, glyceriza, which is licorice root, lemon balm, very calming, very nurturing, very nourishing herbs to help dampen that Th2 response. But if you're Th1, this will make your symptoms a lot worse. So some of the ways that we can modulate one or two is with probiotics, vitamin A, vitamin E or colostrum or if we want to dampen either of them if you're not sure which side you are boswellia pancreatic enzymes and turmeric can all be used so again to determine which one you are you can challenge with the different foods or supplements that I mentioned and just see how you feel for instance you may notice you're more irritable, maybe more insomnia, maybe your joints flare up, maybe your um, uh, mind becomes very foggy, maybe you become very fatigued, we don't know. But if you don't feel good after you take it, then that will give you some clues as to which side you are. Of course, you can always get the lab work done. So for those Th1 dominant people, we'll see higher levels of different immune markers. And these immune markers are called IL-2, IL-12, and TNF-alpha. If you are Th2 dominant, we'll see higher levels of IL-4, IL-13, and IL-10. So you can always get these markers measured with your medical doctor or naturopath if need be. Now, this is an interesting part because um, what he said was only with primary hypothyroid do you actually need to be managed with meds um, the entire time. Now, if your thyroid condition has been undiagnosed for a long time, you may need to go on medications for a while to bring it back into balance. But primary hypothyroid, where we see TSH is high, but T3 and T4 are normal or low, may need to be managed with meds long term. Um, other treatments we can add in is ashwagandha, vitamin A, vitamin D, selenium, and zinc. Um, now, one of the questions my patients love to ask is, do I need to be giving myself iodine as a supplement? And my answer to them is no. And I was happy to see that in the book, um, Dr. 
Karazian also said no to treating with iodine because it can actually swing the thyroid into um, more of a hyperthyroid state by kind of pushing it too far. But with any thyroid condition, and especially when you're starting a new protocol, it's always best to retest every 30 days. We want to see where those TSH levels are, where the T3 and T4 levels are. And specifically with Hashimoto's, I find a lot of my patients will swing from hyper to hypothyroid very easily. So we need to keep that monitored. Um, if we have hypothyroidism caused by pituitary hypofunction, which we see with pregnancy or people that have a bit too much stress, over consuming the caffeine, a very high carbohydrate diet, ultimately what you may need to do is kind of support the thyroid temporarily with medications, um, but you do want to then still monitor to make sure that we're not putting too much thyroid hormone into the body because it can actually work against you by the brain just saying, well, if we have the medication here, then no need for me to continue to try to make the thyroid function naturally. With regards to labs, TSH below 1.8, and a T4 below 6 may be something that you want to be looking at. With treatment, um, thyroid and pituitary support are definitely first and foremost here. Sage leaf, L-arginine, magnesium, zinc, and of course adrenals because again that high stress, need for caffeine, need for carbs will really affect your adrenal health and your adrenal health is where these stress hormones come from. You may have underconversion of the thyroid where you'll find only your levels of T3 are low. Remember, T4 needs to be converted to T3. So you could see this with people with really high levels of cortisol, which you can get measured through salivary hormone testing, um, chronic infections, or chronic inflammation. So the big thing we want to be doing is giving tons of antioxidants to help put those fires out, clean up the damage, like selenium, zinc, vitamin A, C, E, um, and then 2,000 milligrams of phosphatidylserine may also be helpful here. So these are some things that you can think about. If you're having overconversion of your thyroid hormones and decreased thyroid binding globulin, TBG, this could actually be an underlying condition known as PCOS or insulin resistance. So what you'll see here is your T3 and T4 are high or high normal, but certainly nothing that your medical doctor may flag as an issue, which means that you do need to get your testosterone levels checked. You should get your thyroid binding globulin levels checked, get your insulin levels checked, and also get a pelvic ultrasound to rule out PCOS. Um, here we need to really focus on addressing blood sugar issues, adrenals, and liver detoxification. Or if you find that your thyroid binding globulin levels, your TBG levels are elevated, we want to be looking at something known as estrogen dominance. And I've done another presentation specifically on estrogen dominance and how that can affect your weight gain. Um, you'll find T4 is low and your T3 is low even though your TSH levels are normal. And so what happens is we're having increased exposure of synthetic estrogen or m medicated estrogen even with hormone replacement therapy which will increase your production of thyroid binding globulin. And just by the name, it's binding the thyroid hormone. Therefore, the thyroid hormone cannot bind to cells and cause action. So we want to make sure that our estrogen levels are also kept in check. And other symptoms of estrogen dominance could be increased weight gain around the hips, buttocks, and thighs, breast tenderness, irregular menstrual cycles. You may notice spotting before the menses is supposed to come. These are all signs that you may want to get your estrogen levels checked and or do a good estrogen cleanse. Um, and the big thing is, while we're talking about labs, is if you find that there is anemia, specifically iron deficiency anemia, 
it is a deal breaker no matter what you're doing. So if you're trying to fix your thyroid and your iron levels are low, there's no way that you're going to get that benefit that you're looking for long term. Iron is bound to the center of every single red blood cell in your body and to that iron molecule is where we keep oxygen and that oxygen then gets delivered to all the tissues. So if you do not have enough iron in your blood, you're not getting oxygen delivered to the tissues, meaning that the body is just not going to be functioning well in general. So definitely get all those labs done, T3, T4, TSH. We want to do vitamin D. We want to do iron. It may not be a bad idea to do vitamin B12 while you're at it. And if you're starting to suspect things like PCOS, then your testosterone, insulin, and even sex hormone binding globulin wouldn't be a bad idea. So thank you so much. That was a brief synopsis of the notes that I found to be very, very educational in Why Do I Still Have Thyroid Symptoms by Dr. Karazian. And anybody who is suffering from autoimmune thyroid conditions or don't know if you are, please get your levels checked and then really consider which type of immune response you are and start treating the immune system as well as the thyroid. I'm again Dr. Andrea Maxim, naturopathic doctor, the author of Maximized Health and the creator of the Maxim Movement. And if you are interested in purchasing a copy of Maximized Health, either um, paperback or downloadable version, please visit my website www.themaximmovement.com. Every single person who purchases either version will get a free 30-minute consultation with me where we can further delve into why your hormones may not be functioning as they should be, as well as other things related. So your digestion, your acid alkaline balance, and that's really what the book touches on. So thank you so much for listening and have a happy and healthy day.